Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> well, I have to say, I got in uh, late last night. Uh, my flight landed a little after midnight, so I was in my hotel room upstairs, and uh, it was about 1 a.m., and I was hearing this thunderous music still. I'm like, well, I wonder if anybody's going to be there at 9 a.m. Let's see how this goes. So it's great to see everybody here today. Uh, it's been an exciting week for us. Uh, we're super excited as the Braintree family, along with our parent company, PayPal, to have a new partnership with WooCommerce that we announced this week. Uh, we are super excited to provide platforms and APIs and tools that make building really innovative and exciting e-commerce experiences super easy. And so I can't imagine a better platform to be partnering with in WooCommerce, powering 39% of all e-commerce sites. It's pretty staggering. There's only very few platforms in the world you can think about with that kind of reach. And so hopefully together, we can turn that into 39% of commerce as a whole. Uh, so very excited to be working with them and uh, with the team here and, and obviously be here with all of you. So as we think about commerce, like it's, it's hard to like keep all these things in perspective sometimes about how much things are changing and how fast. And, and I can tell you like being part of commerce innovation and platforms powering payments and mobile payments, the rate of change that we're seeing right now is faster than I think it's ever been, probably in just about any technology industry we've seen in the past two decades. And so I'm gonna talk about some of those trends, some of the things that are driving this rate of change, and some of the things that hopefully will be useful for you to be aware of in terms of what we're seeing matters for e-commerce and engaging with consumers moving forward. So the First place to start with all that, of course, is like, well, where have we been? Let's learn from the past. And it's pretty astonishing to think that this was innovation when it started. 1995. How many of you guys or gals remember seeing this experience? Pretty amazing, right? And the first time you saw it, you're like, whoa, something just happened here, something big. So. 1995, right? Sounds like, okay, that was a long time ago. Like, mankind was probably just evolving. We were standing up right at that time. This is 21 years ago. So in our time, and in, in this sort of frame of reference we're in right now, like, that's a really long time, but it's not, right? And what's changed in those 20 years is actually accelerating even more quickly today. So pretty amazing to just look back and think about that. So what's driving this rate of change and all these new experiences building beyond what we originally saw there in that first Amazon site? There are several big ones. First one I think many of you are probably well aware of, and it's mobile. This, this slide and this graph, it's fairly sobering. So when you th think about a couple things here, number one is if you, for those of you who can't read it, hopefully it's pretty legible, but like the, the Things other than white are the baseline, right? That's like the traditional computing experiences. Pretty flat, right? Lots of engagement, but generally flat. But look what mobile did. Mobile is that white, like almost exponential that's on top of that. That's adding to the computing time that consumers are spending online. So we're all online a lot more. We all know we're tethered to our phones. Like, like somebody took mine, so I'm kind of keep reaching for it. Like, ah, what happened? Uh, but this is, this is what's happening. This is what our consumers are all experiencing what we're all living through. But at the same time, like, take the, put that in perspective. $25 trillion of total commerce happening, but only still 1% on mobile. When mobile is now, if you look, compare the white to all the other colors there in 2015, as of last year, mobile was the dominant computing platform. So while there's a lot of changes happening, a lot of mobile has happened, we're actually still early days in that mobile has penetrated the computing angle and the consumer experience, but still only a tiny fraction of e-commerce, which is still only 10% of total commerce. Uh, so something there for us to think about. Some of the other interesting stats. So more than five times the number of mobile phones were sold next year relative to desktop platforms. There are now more than three times the number of mobile phones in use as there are desktop platforms. So the day, time not too, not too many years ago, build a desktop platform, build a good web experience, you're in good shape, figure out how to be responsive on mobile, make it work. The pivot has kind of happened now. It's like, okay, got to start on mobile first, make sure my native experience is good if I have it, if not, amazing mobile web experience, and then, okay, let me make sure my desktop stuff is going well. It's a pretty profound change. Here's an example, uh, hopefully this will play out, of the next theme. 
So with all the mobile rate of change that's occurred, by the way, staggering to think that I think we're just approaching the smartphone's like ninth birthday soon. So, so 21 years from Amazon, nine years from the start of the smartphone where we're already in that mode. So this is an example from one of our clients uh, that we're very happy to work with, Uber. And, and so, uh, you know, for my, I got a few gray hairs here. And so in my past, similar to mobile, mobile would have been number two, it's not anymore. Global was also something like, hey, let's get everything to work well. Let's have a great experience. Let's be really happy with our product. This is cool. Hey, hey let's go global now. And, and it's very much the opposite now as well. We see the customers that are building on our platform are not thinking about how to go global after they scale and after they mature. They're thinking about it day one. And part of that is because platforms have changed, abstractions have risen, it's so much easier to build experiences now than it used to be. So if you don't go global fast, someone else will take your idea and do it for you. Uh, but also we have a lot of great platforms that are making it much easier and more accessible to go global more quickly. Uh, and so like this kind of penetration, and you know, I think Uber is like what, they're sort of seven years into their journey. I think they started this international expansion in 2012. So in, in three, four years, they've made that journey. We know a little bit of that experience. Our, our journey is sort of going from just US to 46 countries ourselves, and we've done that in the last three and a half years. And that's just what the market demands now. Third big trend beyond mobile and global, I think, is this notion of democratization. So kind of got some big words. We use the disruption word in the title, democratization. This one, I think, is something that actually we have a lot of passion about. I personally have a lot of passion about. Like today, you know, when you saw that Amazon experience in 1995, like, and, and you, the first one-click checkout, I forget the time when that actually evolved, but that was sometime a little bit later in the 90s. Amazon was the only one who could do that for a very long time. And, and you look at an experience like an Uber and, uh, or an Eventbrite or Airbnb, Dropbox, everybody has access to the same APIs in our ecosystem that those companies have access to. And if you want to build a, a similar or even better experience, you have full access to go do that. So I think this is super, super critical change that's happened. You know, I think WooCommerce is another fantastic example of that, obviously, right? It's this fantastic platform great distribution, simple, easy to use, makes the complexity go away so that we can focus on the experience and the data. And those are the things, especially that consumer experience that was where the real differentiation is today. Because everyone can kind of do a lot of the plumbing now. AWS, Braintree, WooCommerce, all these platforms make it pretty easy to go. Now you have to differentiate on that experience. There's also things that are like really important to that too, which is just making sure the basics are always right in terms of security, in terms of scale, and all those pieces. So like, that's a key part of any of these platforms that makes uh, that sort of enables a bunch of this democratization today. Like all the basics are taken care of. Don't worry about that anymore. Focus on something great experience on top of that. Last trend is around social and social messaging platforms. So I thought this was kind of an interesting graph too. So you see this growth of sort of internet usage and social platform usage. Uh, and then there's a pretty interesting set here on the side. So you just see this rate of growth. Again, just in the last 10 years, something that was sort of uh, uh, around 10% of adults would have been using is now close to 75%. That's an unbelievable amount of change in such a short period of time. And then another plug on mobile, 85 times a day. I was sort of thinking about this. I'm like, okay, am I, am I like 100? Am I like, am I, am I overachieving? Am, am I like 50 and inadequate? Like, I don't know, but 85, that number is staggering. Whatever that number is, it's a pretty staggering reminder of like how much this adoption and change has sort of driven what we do. So with that context, like, so these are some of the macro things that we believe are driving a lot of this rate of change and rate of innovation. I'm gonna talk for a second just a little bit more uh, about mobile, and we'll, we'll have a couple more slides here. So you think about what has just happened in the last two years even, where you've seen this proliferation of mobile wallets occurring. And, and, and this, it's pretty staggering to just think about, like two years ago, uh, uh, it was like the first advent of Apple Pay, PayPal's one-touch product, that we have in the market. Uh, we now have that in over 130 countries globally with more than 18 million people using that. 
Uh, we've seen other wallets, Android Pay, Samsung Pay. All these things are out there, and they, they also require this democratization because this creates complexity for how do merchants and developers like plug in and integrate all these things, and how do you avoid this sort of NASCARification of all these different labels and wallets and stickers across all of your experiences, and how do you simplify that? So that's something that's really important to think about as you move forward, and that this democratization that we all have to think about has to continue to solve for that problem, because there's gonna be more and more of this change, harder for merchants to adjust and adopt to these things, because you all and we all have lots of other things to go do with our product and to build those great experiences. But yet, at the same time, we have to respond to this because these new things are evolving and happening. So that's a big part of our, our focus on our platform is trying to solve those problems as well. So let's think about some things around context and how things have also evolved in this space. So I used to work in the online ads world, so this one's kind of near and dear to me. So you know, one of the greatest sources of context and what people want to buy and what they're going after traditionally has been online search. And someone goes in, they type a query, and they say, like, hey, I want to find a digital camera. Well, okay, this person's probably looking to buy a digital camera. Cool. Um, and the same thing is sort of the context you get back in terms of timeline updates, tweets, et cetera, that show, like, hey, this is what my friends are looking at. This is what's happening. Okay. Lots of information, lots of context there. What's changing and happening on mobile, though, is a much richer engagement and a much richer context. And the difference between seeing what my friends are doing and seeing opinions of what they want and what they think makes sense and how that drives my opinions about what I think is interesting and what I want to go buy. And then for e-commerce sites and merchants and developers to think about, well, then how to present the products that people are interested in and want to buy. It's a very different and richer experience. So when you think about what's happened in the last few years with mobile, right, we talk about almost the ninth birthday now of the iPhone. And so how much has changed? That's now you know, the primary computing platform of mobile as we saw before. So when we think of this notion of contextual commerce, which I'm gonna talk about for the next few minutes and the next few slides, this is what we think the next big wave of commerce looks like. So mobile was this last big explosion of innovation, still very nascent as we saw, lots of room to grow, like 10% on e-commerce, 1% of commerce on mobile. The next three to five years, we believe, will be dominated by this notion of contextual commerce. And the fundamental concept behind that is gone are the days where you sell things only on your own website or your own app. People are gonna be selling their goods and services everywhere across the internet and connected experiences where consumers are. And there'll be a lot of platformization to occur to help make that happen and democratize access to that, still very early days, but we think this is a big, big push for how people are gonna connect. And so I'm gonna show you a few different examples of how this stuff will look. So first one uh, is messaging. So you know, when you think about yeah, so there's some screenshots here of, uh, of Facebook Messenger and Uber, which is an integration uh, we did recently with both of them. So, you know, imagine a world where, like, it's so cool, you can pull open your Uber app, and you can go and book a ride. It's like a ubiquitous experience now, right? It didn't even exist a few years ago. But imagine a world where I'm in Facebook Messenger, and I tell my friends, say, hey, uh, come meet me at Austin City Lights. And I immediately have the ability to then book an Uber directly from that experience that knows where I'm going, knows who I am, and streamlines the process even more further. And this, this is a key harbinger of what is to come. Because consumers are spending their time in lots of different places, not always on our e-commerce websites, right? But they're interested in the goods and services and want to convert on those as quickly as possible. And you know, even for experiences that have that rich context that we talked about, like search, you still don't always get where you wanna go. You might click through on something and you're getting redirected around, maybe deep linking isn't quite the answer that you were hoping for and maybe you don't get to exactly the product you were looking for. What if you could buy a rate where it was? And this is one of those rare cases where that's great for the consumer platform, it's great for the consumer, and it's great for the merchant. Right? Everyone wins, and so that's also a place where we've seen like massive innovation and rapid change occurs in places and contexts where everyone wins. 
So messaging, we think, is super critical. Lots of context, rich engagement, lots of things that we think will trigger off of this, and it's already starting. Next one is buy buttons. So this notion of why should you only have to sell in your app or your website? Why can't I have a button that lets me go and put my goods and services for sale wherever a consumer will be? Whether that's some JavaScript site out there, whether it's in a native app, uh, or other places that you know, haven't even evolved yet that we don't know about. Uh, what if it's there on my Netflix screen? Uh, lots of different things. Connected TVs we have now, all these things are sort of underutilized. What if I had a way to distribute into all those experiences simply and easily? So this is another area we expect to see a lot of innovation. I think it started largely with Pinterest push about a year ago, launching buyable pins and making that connection we just talked about happen. I'm spending time on Pinterest, I see something I like, why should I have to pop around? I want to buy it right then and there. Good for the consumer, good for Pinterest, good for whoever was selling that good. Um, and look at that stat, 87% of pinners have purchased something because of Pinterest, so they're there because they're already looking for that. Like, they're hungry for it, I want to convert that context and that desire into a purchase, like, let's do it. Email. I think email is another sort of, uh, we all have our opinions on email, and, and you know, we all have our opinions on spam and everything, but at the end of the day, we also, I'll tell you my own personal story, like I have a, um, I enjoy cycling a lot, uh, and I uh, get to do that a lot in California, and so there's a, a small merchant that I really like to buy, they're cycling t-shirts. So every month I get an email from them that says, hey, t-shirt of the month, and like every month, I buy the t-shirt because I like it. I was like, oh, cool. Uh, but even though they have a really streamlined experience and I can go through and buy that with like PayPal OneTouch, I still have to click the email, pop into their site. They do a good job at handling that. I get to the product that I want. I configure my size. I go check out, pay with OneTouch. Don't have to proceed from that. What if I could cut one or two steps out of that flow? What if I could be buying directly from the email? Right? We all know how much conversion matters, right? Now hard those how hard fought those battles are, right? And still today, even on, on mobile experience, we know it's like four times harder generally to buy than it is on a desktop platform. So like anything you can take out of the mix, because by the way, that email is being read on a mobile device, right? So anything you can take out of that mix reduces that friction. And so we think that this is another really big important push that's going to occur. So six look at these stats too. Sixty five percent of emails open on a mobile device. And 50% um, more leads coming more cheaply for these merchants based on their email engagement. So it's like any tool. It can be used for good or evil, right? If you're using email right, there's a lot you can go do with it. And if we can short circuit that buying process and reduce those steps, this is a great place, again, where the consumer and the merchant are going to win. So this is another angle that we've been pushing, so this one's a little bit of a, showing a product that, that we've just launched, so PayPal Commerce. And so this is a, a partnership between uh, my team, the Braintree team, and, and, uh, and PayPal, who we're very proud to be part of, and a company that we acquired late last year called Modest in Chicago. And we've been able, in a short period of time, to put together a platform that makes a bunch of these pieces happen. There are a lot of different underlying plumbing and pieces to make all these things happen across buyable pins, email buy, and other commerce experiences. But if we can take these pieces and plug them together and make it simple and easy to engage with that, plugging into whatever commerce platform the inventory exists and making that super easy for everyone, we think like, there's something really exciting to go and be done there. So. Um, couple things to, to sort of reiterate on as we go through this, and a couple of thoughts like as we, as we sort of talk about the evolution and the rate of change. So um, first, mobile's there, huge swing, huge push, uh, but we've only seen the very beginning days, right? I, I don't know about you, but I still think 1% of commerce on mobile, still something I find extremely, extremely surprising and pretty staggering, right? And a lot of that is because there are still so few experiences that are honed for mobile first. Why aren't people thinking about mobile first today when we saw those stats like everyone is using mobile first, so we gotta build for mobile first. 
Uh, the second is don't think about how to have people just buying stuff off of your own website. Look for platforms and the tools and the experiences are going to enable you to sell wherever the consumer is. Drive conversion. Go and talk and engage with where the consumer is happening. Um, and this overall rate of change that's occurring. Pretty phenomenal, right, to think about 21 years since that Amazon experience, nine years since the first smartphone came out, and now we're one year in to, you know, these contextual experiences just starting. But you got to get in front of this stuff and be ready for it because this, we re this is our opinion anyway, that this is what's coming next. People are going to buy wherever they're at. And so a lot of the things that are powering that, again, are great platforms and, and great innovators. And so we're, we're very fortunate and very lucky to have been on a great entrepreneurial journey of our own, going from a small startup and growing extremely rapidly over the course of a few years, and the opportunity to work with so many great innovators. It's very humbling to go and talk to our customers and to see what they're doing and see what they've built. And I mentioned a few of them before. And you know, when you get to help power great platforms like GitHub uh, and their experience and their payments, as well as some of the other folks I mentioned, well, it's, pretty, it's pretty humbling. Uh, and so I think it's also there for all of us. I know many of you are consuming these platforms and APIs as developers, but I think it's powerful for all of us to continue to think about how do we all participate in that democratization? How are we all continuing to contribute back? WooCommerce is a great example of that with this like very viral open source community that's driving all this innovation and all this availability and powerful tools that are simple and easy to use. Like we share a lot of that DNA and that's part of why it's so cool to be here today and be with all of you. But let's all be part of that journey because I think there's an awful lot we can all go do to make sure that these next wave of commerce are simple, simpler and easier and we're driving richer experiences and making it better for all of us along the way. So um, with that, really appreciate the opportunity of being here with you guys today. Uh, hopefully you got some useful stats there that'll help you out and like stimulate some thinking as you go through the rest of the day. I know it's a lot of uh, really rich agenda uh, ahead and, uh, and hopefully you know, all that is sort of between you and the after party tonight. So like, hopefully all that goes well and smoothly. Uh, but with that, really appreciate the time and opportunity and uh, very fortunate to have got to help uh, start the day with you all today. So thanks so much for all that, appreciate it.